While I attended my first college football game in 10 plus years, I also want to tell you about the new fall shows on television. You remember television, right? And in a Patreon exclusive, Brett Kavanaugh comes alive. Hey, I have a lot to complain about, so let's do this. The recently canceled podcast with Lon Hey, how goes it? So, um, this. Sorry, I'm getting the episode out a little late here. I gotta be a little quiet too, but, uh,. Just been a little busy. Want to make sure I get this out while it's still September. You know, for the Patreon uh, crowd, the, what, three of you that might be listening. I want to tell you that I went to a college football game the previous weekend. Yeah, you know, I, I mentioned I'd be going to this. It was a fun experience. It was a very different experience than the last time I went. See, I, last time I went, I believe it was KU crushing Nebraska in 2007. Now, there were some differences between Lawrence, Kansas football and Norman, Oklahoma football. For one, security. At KU, it's like, hey, we have the no guns allowed sticker. I guess that'll suffice. There might have been a cop or two. There were a lot of senior citizens, like some kind of poncho, and they, they would hold hands and give you the, hey, don't don't run onto the field type uh, thing. Like, you don't want to crush these old people, right? Totally different at this game. I don't know if it's because Army was in town. There were cops all over the place. You would think that there was a terrorist attack. I mean, this was a, a, an amazing amount of cops. Like, more than, more than you see at any kind of international airport. Uh, they had streets blocked off the works, went through multiple security checks. I was in the Army crowd. You see, uh, my dad went to OU. I had an uncle who was with me. He went to Army. So we were among the, like, 50 Army people of the 87,000 at this stadium. Now, Lawrence, Kansas, KU Stadium held about 50,000 when I went there. It might, it might have a couple hundred more. I think they tried to add some seats on one end that was completely open. But this was a totally different environment. Inside, there was, it was like a legitimate building. There were various named foods you could pick up. Pizza Hut is what I had. My dad had Chick-fil-A. At KU, it was like... Uh, there's a pretzel stand. Pretty big difference. It was a fun game. A very interesting game. Army refused to throw the ball, and the few times they threw the ball, it was basically a trick play. That's how seldom they threw the ball. Now, last year, I guess they led the NCAA in rushing yards per game, which is not that amazing of a feat when you consider that teams are not trying for that stat. They have a balance attack or maybe a pass-heavy attack typically these days. So if you only run, yeah, you can win that stat. It just doesn't necessarily win you games. But this was a nail-biter. It even ended up in overtime when Oklahoma missed a gimme field goal. So... Yeah, yeah, it, it was it was a good game and everything. Uh, it was just a very different experience that I'm used to. But you know, I don't I don't really like traveling a whole lot. I kind of want you know things to be a little more local for me. If you want to come see me, you see me. I I don't need to be going places and have to experience other people's uh, whole mess. Not really my thing so much. Meanwhile. We had the TV shows for the fall season start up. You know, just a few of them here and there. I caught um, only a, a, a little bit, but I want to give you some thoughts on what I did see. Lethal Weapon on Fox kills off, spoilers, Martin Riggs. This is the Mel Gibson character in the movie. Now you have Murtaugh, played by 
Damon Wayans, as weird as that is. And this is actually in third season. And he's like coming to terms with Riggs being dead. I guess at the end of the second season, they shot they shot Riggs and he's bleeding. And it's like, oh, they're going to put him in the hospital and he'll be okay. But cliffhanger. However, this was used as a way to get him out of there. This guy, um, Lance Crawford, I think's his name. And it's very unusual to see a movie turn TV show completely go against the movie setup in this way. You know, and as some people have brought up to my attention, how it's wouldn't you rather your TV show become a movie? The one show that makes all of this possible is MASH. Somebody could say, oh, look, we have the next MASH. The popular movie, we could turn that into a TV thing. Okay, And so every once in a while, you get a movie turned into a TV instead of actually have sequels. Lethal Weapon had sequels aplenty. I don't think that Lethal Weapon's TV show needed the name Lethal Weapon. It could have been called anything else, and people would just say, well, it's very similar to Lethal Weapon or any other number of TV shows. But now you're taking the lethal weapon out of lethal weapon. And you replace him with this new partner, Cole, played by Stifler, whom I don't have a big problem with in this role or um, in most things I've seen him in, really. Um, he's, he's charismatic enough. He's, he's funny. He looks toughened. I just don't think that this ever should have been called Lethal Weapon. Damon Wayans is way wrong for Murtaugh. Murtaugh was not a guy known for comedy the way Damon Wayans is. So you're you're really hamstringing Damon Wayans here. And if you're going to make Riggs the funny one, uh, you know why why couldn't this just have been something else? So now you're running around with half of a Lethal Weapon property. I don't expect this to last uh, another season, to be honest with you. Last Man Standing was also on Fox. I caught the second half of this. There were two key replacements, otherwise it looks very similar to The Last Man Standing you know. Now, Last Man Standing was never amazing. It was never as good as Home Improvement. It didn't really have uh, the catchphrases uh, or really the ratings, but it did very well on a Friday night when, in modern times, post-TGIF, Fridays get terrible ratings. There's just people doing other stuff than wanting to watch television. So, to me, this was a surprise that when Fox picked it up, they put it on Friday. Why not put it on a day of the week where this could get big ratings for you? This was a very strong Friday show for ABC that they axed in some attempt to turn Fridays into some kind of sci-fi thing. Let's have a Marvel thing over here and then hit you with uh, some Dateline, what would you do type stuff. So they revamped their Fridays and in consequence dropped all the comedy from Friday on ABC. How does this look on Fox? Well, Boyd, the young grandson, has been replaced. He's been aged up slightly. Not so sure anybody would... A casual viewer may not have picked up on it. Just, oh hey, you got a little, a little older, okay. However, middle daughter Mandy has been totally replaced, and they brought this up in the very last line of the episode, where her, um, are they married at this point, fiancé or something? Kyle, the, the kind of doofus that works with uh, uh, Tim Allen's character, he's like, oh hey, now I know what's different about you, you're taller and you're blonde, and then they hug. Yeah, she's about five inches taller. Uh, looks considerably different, which to me is quite telling as typically on a show they will try to get a doppelganger of whoever they replaced. Hey, we replaced a gal with black hair. I guess we're getting one with black hair. Nope. <laughs> they found a blonde chick. The show largely feels the same. It doesn't 
feel any more like a Fox show or any less like an ABC show. If you liked The Last Man Standing, you're probably going to continue to like it. Now, I did catch Magnum P.I. on CBS. And I have some mixed feelings about this. Firstly, they retain the classic theme song. Does one get points for that? You had an amazing song in Magnum P.I. When that started in, what, 81? I Or was it 80 or 81? I'm thinking here. I don't think that it's a tough call to say, look, let's just use the song again. It's a reboot. It's not a Tom Selleck passed the reins down to this guy. Oddly enough, Tom Selleck is on the CBS network. He's been affiliated with CBS for a while. I evidently guess he's okay with this, but it's weird how somebody will die, and then all of a sudden the reboot of their show or their movie. So the guy who played like Higgins died fairly recently, and then all of a sudden... Oh, that clears the path for the reboot, doesn't it? So you have this new guy. Um, uh, his name Rodriguez, I think. Was he in um, uh, Magic Mike, possibly? One of the smaller roles. He's a good deal shorter than Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck about 6'5". This guy, maybe 5'9". He doesn't quite have a character. It seems like everybody else has characters to compensate. And this seems to be a recurring thing with the numerous reboots on CBS. They're swimming in about five of them, if you include Star Trek Discovery. Because look, you got SWAT, Hawaii Five-0, MacGyver, this, Magnum P.I., and then that Star Trek show. Is that all they can come up with over at CBS? Is, hey, here's a show we used to have. What is going on? And MacGyver... May as well be Scorpion, because it's not about MacGyver, it's about his crew. Well, now you have the new, uh, I guess, Magnum, Private Eye, Magnum, P.I., okay, he, Thomas Magnum. He lives in this estate where, I guess he's the friend of some super rich guy. And the super rich guy has somebody else looking over the estate. Which kind of makes you think, okay, couldn't... Couldn't uh, Thomas Magnum do that himself? But nope. It's not just some some guy looking over the estate. Now it's like younger hot chick, British. Uh, she's former uh, MI6 or something. It's, it's like it, whenever a girl's brought into one of these kind of things, she's always made up into a badass. It's like, well, we got to get the female viewers to like this. Okay, well, we got a tough chick. So she does more badass shit the Magnum, or damn close to it. There's some weird-ass faulty CGI at the start. I think you have uh, Justin Lin on board with this. You've got Han from Tokyo Drift. He's all up in here. He's uh, some one of the cops that I guess uh, Magnum has to deal with on occasion. They didn't waste any time tying this into Y50 because I think... There's a um, there's this lady he runs into, and I think she's like a um, was she a secretary at the police station, or or was she just in the office because she's the coroner or something along these lines? But she's on Hawaii Five O, so they they didn't waste any time with that tie in whatsoever, and that was pretty bold actually. I I guess you're going to be seeing several tie-ins as both these series take place in a shared universe on Hawaii's Big Island, I suppose. It's also telling how Tomnus Magnum, he has the updated V8 Ferrari. He has the 458. Oh, sorry, the 488. However, once bullets start flying, it becomes a 458. Isn't that a little weird? A little price savvy, huh? He breaks two Ferraris in the first episode, though it looks like he's going to get a new 488. Now, why would this guy who... 
I I guess it doesn't make a ton of sense in a reboot for them to have the classic Ferrari, the 308. Actually, uh, Magnum P.I., he, I think he had two or three different Ferraris, but they I think th- the premise was that they acted like it was one car. But he was driving around in the newest available V8 model Ferrari at the time. What's he doing with a nearly 40-year-old Ferrari at this point? It doesn't make a ton of sense. It really doesn't. Um, it, it, and I guess he wrecks that one. And some of the effects are not bad. Uh, a little more polish, and this doesn't look too far off from a Marvel Films CGI. Not saying a whole lot. You know, I'm not really all up on those uh, for the most part. So, was this a bad show? Time will tell. I would never want to get involved in some kind of reboot. I feel like you're always being compared to what came before it. And if you didn't take it far enough in one direction, then you're going to upset fans if you play it safe. You're going to upset fans if you take it somewhere else. You're just damned if you do, damned if you don't. I would avoid. It might be an okay show to check out you know, once in a while. I'm kind of curious to see what excuse they have for him getting his uh, Ferrari 488. I guess it got lightly machine gunned. Maybe it can be replaced. Uh, well, repaired, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I don't have a ton of faith in this show. I am kind of surprised that Y50 has gone on as long as it has in this rebooted form. And I think that gives CBS some kind of faith that, hey, look... We're already holding these properties. We can make something of them. Yeah, they're not going to get the views they used to get. But in this day and age, what does? So it's a mitigated risk over here. ABC showed off a million little pieces, which I did not watch. I just want to mention a couple things here. First of all, obnoxious advertising we have these friends who get together because one of them offed himself like it looks like a stock deal went bad so he jumped off a building okay um if i had to guess is it like he it's going to be revealed that he had cancer hell they might have said as much already but you have these guys kind of chilling right because this is the big chill it's The Big Chill brought to TV. And how long can you keep this premise up? I guess we all have to hang out forever now because, uh, you know, this friend of ours died and we haven't seen each other in a while. So we got to, like, you know, take all this and put it in perspective. But really, this is ABC's effort at a This Is Us clone. Now, I have only seen a couple of seconds at a time of This Is Us. But I watched that trailer when it was new, and I thought, this this looks abysmal. This can't work. This looks like the worst TV show. And it becomes a big hit. And how does it do this? Relatable. And it's relatable because it's not about anything. Hey, these people have lives. You have a life. This is us. Oh, you're one of us. You feel included. It's in the title. It's in the, look, we have a black guy. We have a fat woman. We have a hot chick. We have a hunk guy. Like, something for everybody. I don't think that a million little pieces has something for everybody, but it has that kind of vagueness. Oh, look, uh, it's a million little pieces. What's it about? Well, it could be about anything. It could be about a million little pieces. Uh, Well, is it about something? Well, it sounds to me like it's about more than This Is Us. As shocking as that is. But this, that vague title, you can clearly tell that's what they're going for here. Hell, the the asshole behind This Is Us came up with a movie. I think it's Bomb Sense. Or maybe it's not even out. uh, Because it it got, like, no advertising. Or hardly any. I, I saw something about it. It was, uh... Life itself, 
you know, just take that that uh, title from the documentary about Roger Ebert, and you say, oh, hey, life itself. Well, what's it about? Well, you have a life, and these are people who have, they're experiencing life. Yeah, a whole lot of shots of people just looking straight at the camera, and that's supposed to give you emotions, you know, because they're calling upon the viewer directly to elicit these feelings from them, right? Like, oh, well, look, look, they're, they're addressing you. They're addressing the audience. You're supposed to emote. You're supposed to react to this. Pathetic. You know, come up with something, <laughs> people. Is it really that hard? Because I don't think so. To have a story, add some characters of interest. Don't just make something all characters, no story. So that's going to do it for the free version of the Recently Canceled podcast. You're going to want to hear what I have to say about Brett Kavanaugh, and you know YouTube will censor this shit immediately if I say another word. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Fry. $1 a month gets you full access.